Right, welcome on site to a new week at Tucson RV Solar and we have got a seismic toy hauler by Jayco we're working on this week. You see Todd busily getting after it on the solar panels. We got seven of these things that we're gonna add to the two that are already up top of this toy hauler. And we'll show you what that looks like in a minute. All right, here we are up on the roof. You can see we got our two Go Power 200 watt panels. We unplugged them already, but you can see that's where they paralleled them before they went into the roof. And so plenty of room. What we're actually gonna do is add two more panels up here, one there, one there. And that'll give us a series of three. Two more panels right there for another series of three. And then three panels here for a third series of three. And we'll take those three series and put them into parallel and we still won't be pushing over 20 amps down into the, through the wire and the, into the solar controller. But 1800 watts going into his solar controller for this 24 volt system. Got plenty of real estate to do that. He's already got soft starts on all the air conditioners, so we don't have to worry about that today. Let's go find the transfer switch because that's problem number two. All right, you can see up front we got his onboard generator and his current Battleborn batteries. We think what we're going to do is actually pull those batteries out. That's where his new epic v2 24 volt batteries are going to go and then he's going to save one of those batteries uh, for everything else and then we pulled down this was all walled off uh, you can see we've got our transfer switch right there um, and then we got the current inverter down on the other end which obviously that's going away so we're going to reinforce this and we're going to create a wall right in here for our dual inverter setup and then our victron wall and see what we can do to make it look cool. Maybe give him a little bit of space back or not impact his space at all. And then we go inside the rig. The only thing we really got to worry about in here is this current solar controller location. We're actually going to pull that out and that's where his touchscreen is going to go so we don't have to create a new hole inside of his rig. This is his on off for the inverter. We're gonna pull that out, just put a black plate in its place. And then he can, you know, do a key ring there later, something like that. But uh, plenty of room to make it look cool. So we'll get at it. All right, so here we are part way through day one. Found everything that we needed to find. We're taking the inverter cables out and obviously the batteries are gone. So we're gonna build us a platform to put the two 24 volt batteries in. And then we're gonna figure out a plate system to go over the top to have his single 12 volt battery in. <clears throat> and then can plug everything back in. This is actually gonna get rerouted and be coming out of his, this would be the 12 volt side. And we have taken out the inverter, which was right here. Transfer switch was over there. That is now mounted up on the ceiling. And we already prepped this area. Now we're going to paint it and everything's actually going to be mounted on this board and we may not cause him to lose any storage, which will be awesome. Uh, so looking for an awesome product here. Up on the top, Todd's already got all the solar mounted, sealed, and wired. So 1800 watts here with these nine 200 watt panels wired into parallel with three series of yeah three series of three and sealed and good cable management all the way throughout all right so here we are at the beginning of the next day you can see we got a lot of stuff in uh, our wire chase is not actually mounted yet but we had it in there for sizing purposes 
And walk around to the other side. We're gonna go ahead and get our battery tray cut, put in there, so we get our batteries mounted. Start building that up. Got our two breaker boxes ready to go for how we're gonna split out in between our two inverters. Uh, 24 volt install, but we're actually gonna go in parallel with these two things so we can add that up to about 4,800 watts uh, when he's off grid. So I'm gonna get those wired in first and then measure all of our other lines to be able to get everything wired up. And then we're gonna do something cool to cover these. And, uh, and then obviously not cause him any loss of space. So I think he's gonna really like it. We're gonna get started right now. All right, here we are all complete on a super overcast day in Tucson. But you know what? It keeps the heat down, we're not dying. So uh, we're gonna walk through this bit by bit, but I'm actually gonna start with the batteries first. Cause we, what we have here is two 24 volt, 230 amp Echo, Echo, Epic V2 batteries. We got the master and we got a slave. Got them daisy chained in there. So they actually detect each other and you can put 15 or 16, uh, I can't remember which, but uh, it's definitely on in the book and on their website uh, in parallel. And they'll be able to talk to each other. Obviously, you're not going to fit more of those in here, but what we've got with a 24 volt system, we still need to be able to start the generator, uh, have plenty of residual amperage to be able to run his jacks and slides. That's why we still have his Battleborn 100 amp hour battery up there, too. And you'll see the rest of where this all fits in on the inside. Now, with the Epic V2s, the Bluetooth is not actually in the battery, it's in the meter or monitor, which is an external monitor. And we were able to mount this right here in his propane bay. So he can actually open this up without looking at his phone or any Victron, he can see that the batteries are at 35%. And if they're charging or discharging, this has four amps an hour. Remember, super overcast day. So solar is putting four amps an hour into his 24 volt battery bank right now. Uh, let's see, this is all the 12 volt side of the house. All that's on and operating as intended. And then we get into the system itself. And here we think we've done a real nice one. We saved him all of his space. This is exactly what he had before, but we took that wall out and we're able to push it all inside. All right, here we are on left side, street side. Got our master inverter, so that's why I know where I am. Uh, up here we got our four aught cable coming from the battery bank that we just talked about. On the positive side, going through a class T fuse, and then the BEP, master cutoff switch, which is good for 400 amps continuous. No shunt on this one because we got the batteries giving us their own measurement and controlling their charging. And all that going into the Lynx distributor where we did the hack and we're able to see, get the lights. Got our MPPT 15060. We got 1800 watts of solar up on the roof. This is good for like 1780 watts at 24 volts. So we've maxed it out, obviously. And then he's got his shut off switch right here, shut off breaker for his solar. All that running through the Serbo GX as well. We got our first inverter here, our master. Other one's down on the other side, and we'll walk around and get a look at that. But you can see on this plexiglass where we went ahead and cut access holes to be able to get into things that he would need to do uh, maybe on a normal basis or in an emergency procedure or he could actually take the entire wall out pretty simply. So now we'll walk around to the other side. All right here we are on the other side so we talked all the way through that inverter and that's the master. We got our slave inverter here and you can see the cat 6 cable there that's connecting this inverter over to the master inverter. We have our inverter in and our inverter out breakers, which are taking our 50 amp cable in from the transfer switch and then splitting it in between each inverter. Now these are both two by 120 inverters. So we've actually put them into parallel. So we got all four wires going in and out of both inverters. So instead of just 2400 watts per leg, if we did split phase now it's a full 4800 watts as needed on either leg one or leg two when he's inverting. 
And then up top, we've got our 70 amp Orion DC to DC charger. Uh, and then as you remember, we already put, we left that one Battleborn 12 volt in there uh, just to give him a little extra amperage capacity should he need it. But as you can see, super clean install, saved him all the space and he's able to maximize his power all the way throughout. And then the last bit to control everything is this touch 70. So right now he's inverting, it's shutting power where it needs to go. And then the battery is actually charging right now. Um, awesome thing about these Epic batteries, is you can, all that is actually being fed from the battery itself. So if you go into settings and your connected devices, you can actually see the Epic battery right there. And then it's telling you it's 26 volts. Actually go in and, and look at its state of charge. And then you can expand into details and look in the cell voltages. And its battery modules tells us that we have our two online. So that's how we know we're seeing both batteries currently. So pretty awesome using Victron communication to be able to take battery information and project it right through the Servo GX into the screen.